Ever since 2017, when I bought my first MacBook Pro, I have been using macOS almost daily. It's one of the most stable operating systems I have ever used, and over the years, I appreciate it more and more each day. Combined with the excellent hardware, macOS provides a unique and carefree experience for me. This is even more true after I upgraded to the M1 MacBook in 2020. Despite some major redesigns that I am not particularly a fan of, like the System Settings app, macOS is still my favorite system for getting work done, which mostly involves writing documents, scripts, as well as some photo and video editing. That being said, it is definitely not flawless. Calling them flaws may not be entirely accurate because it is mostly due to my personal history of using computers, my current setup, and of course my own preferences. Because I also own a PC running Ubuntu as my gaming and productivity device, and having been a Windows user almost all my life, there are certain things in macOS I can never adjust to. Or more accurately, I don't have the will to change my habits of using a computer since I need to use both macOS and Linux simultaneously. If the ways of doing things are too different in these systems, it will certainly affect my productivity in a negative way. I am sure many Mac users are not annoyed by these little things. Maybe they don't have to use Windows or Linux in their life, or simply prefer the way macOS functions. So today I just want to share with you the things that drive me crazy in macOS as a person who uses both a Mac and a PC daily, and how I fix these problems. The first thing I want to talk about is window management. I don't know why people would think window snapping is not a necessary feature in any desktop environment. To me, the lack of window snapping is absolutely the worst part of macOS. I know there are a lot of tricks to achieve similar results, such as holding the Option key while double-clicking the corner of a window to maximize, or holding the Option key and hovering over the full screen button to show an option to move a window to the left or right side of the screen. But compared to Windows or any Linux desktop environment's window manager, these extra steps are clunky and not efficient. Luckily it is an easy fix. Just install Rectangle, a tiny app that perfectly brings window snapping into macOS. Actually it provides way more functions than I ever need and it is totally free and open source. I think Rectangle should be everyone's first app to install when they get a Mac device. There is really no reason not to use it. Another annoying thing in macOS is when you click the X button to close a window, the application does not actually close completely, leaving an icon with a dot in the dock. You either have to use the quit option in the top menu bar, or right click on the icon in the dock to actually exit the app. Some people might say closing a window should not be considered the same as exiting an app, but to me it's just an unnecessary extra step because there is a reason the minimize button exists. So how to fix it? Well, you need to install an app called Swift Quit and log out or reboot your Mac for it to function properly. You can also create an exclude list in case you don't want to exit certain apps with one click. By default, macOS's natural scrolling works really well with its excellent trackpad, and I have already gotten used to it over the years. But in the system settings, there is no separate option for the mouse to scroll in the opposite direction. Natural scrolling just feels wrong to me when I use a mouse. The solution? There is an app called Scroll Reverser, which allows you to set the scrolling direction for your trackpad and mouse separately. I have been using this app for years now, and it works exactly as I want it to. It is also free, so I highly recommend it. Mac OS's command tab function is so bare bones it can't even switch to a window that I previously minimized. Also, it is just a row of icons, so I have no way to preview the windows of opened applications. Another major issue is that in Mac OS, if I have multiple windows open within one app, I have to use command tab to switch to that app first, and then use command and this key to switch between those windows. I have no idea why it is designed like this, so I looked for a solution and finally found one. It's called Alt Tab. Basically, it makes window switching usable in Mac OS again. It shows every window that is open, minimized, or even on a different desktop. It displays a preview of the windows, making it easier to find the one you want to switch to, and you can even minimize, maximize, or close any window when you press Alt-Tab. An amazing app, and it's also free. The real pain when switching between a Linux PC and a MacBook is the Finder app. It works differently and has a lot of weird settings by default. For example, when you select multiple items and right-click to get info, expecting to see the total size of these items, instead you get multiple info windows of each item all over your screen. By default, the icon view is just a mess once you move any item. When you resize the window, the arrangement of the icons doesn't even change, making it difficult sometimes to find the item you want. Also, there is no cut and paste function using Command 
and an X. I also dislike it when I press enter after selecting an item. It just lets me rename the item instead of opening it. Compared to popular Linux desktops file managers such as Dolphin or Nautilus, the difference in user experience is so big it really hurts my efficiency when using Mac OS. To partially improve my Finder experience, I go to the View Options by right-clicking on a blank area, set both Group By and Sort By options to Name, and make sure it is the default setting for everywhere else. Another thing is to learn to use the Option key. For example, to cut and paste items, just use Command, Option and V instead of Command, V. After selecting multiple items, hold the Option key while right-clicking, and you can select Show Inspector to see the total size of these items. You can also hold the Option key to copy the file path of an item, which is very helpful. Overall, I still find the file manager in Mac OS a weakness of the system, but I can't find the perfect replacement yet, so this is all I can do right now. In fact, there is an app called Extra Finder, but the installation of it requires disabling system integrity, which I hesitate to do, so I gave up on it. To me, it is still shockingly weird that a modern operating system like macOS lacks the function to adjust the volumes of multiple applications separately. If you want your music at 80% volume and the game volume at 30%, you can't do it with the system's built-in volume control settings. And of course, there is an app to solve the problem. SoundSource is a commercial app that allows you to change each app's volume or even send individual apps to different audio outputs. But the app costs $39 and I'm too cheap to try it out. Out. Luckily I found another option, which is freeware. It's called background music. It can automatically pause the music when a second application is playing audio and also provides per application volume control. However, it is still in alpha state, so use it at your risk. I also found it listing all the applications I have opened in the drop-down menu, and many of them are not even capable of outputting any audio. There were also occasions where it just muted a YouTube video for no reason, but as a free and open source app, I have nothing to complain about. As you can see, there is a trend here. For every issue I encounter, there is almost always an app to fix it. The problem is just how to find them. Want a better Spotlight search experience? Install Alfred. Want a more powerful dock? Try UBAR. Need to access clipboard history? Get the free and open source Mackie app. And after the installation of all these apps, you get a menu bar with too many icons. To fix this, you just install another app called Bartender. There is no perfect operating system. All these fixes that I did to make my Mac OS experience a bit more comfortable may not be necessary for the majority of people who just use their Macs as they are supposed to. People who use more than one operating system tend to complain more, and it is a totally reasonable thing to do since sometimes we just want a more unified experience so that we don't have to adjust ourselves when switching between computers. Some may ask why I stick with a MacBook when I clearly want a more Windows or Linux experience, and the answer is that the hardware I get from a MacBook is simply unmatched. With a MacBook, I never have to worry about battery life. I get an excellent trackpad experience. I don't have to think about screen color calibration because they are generally good enough for most use cases. And in my experience, the quality control of a MacBook is just superior. They tend to last much longer than my previous laptops. So as a result, I'm willing to spend some time and effort to improve my user experience with a MacBook. The other thing I would like to mention here is Asahi Linux, which aims to bring a native Linux experience to Apple Silicon devices. I did a video about the the overall experience a few months ago. It was already pretty good by then and it is definitely better today, but there are some remaining issues that prevent me from daily driving it, like the lack of crucial software such as DaVinci Resolve. One exciting piece of news is that according to the developers, Vulkan support would soon be available, and I think it would just change the whole landscape of gaming on a Mac, at least on the emulation side. I am very excited about it and will do some testing once it comes out. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching.